sweet. I wonder if I would see whales. No wonder there's boats. They're looking at their whale watching. I wonder if the whales will hear me. Oh my gosh, that is so awesome. all these words when one can see killer whales. Poor whales. We're not chasing them to kill them, we're chasing them to take pictures of them. I'm sure all those boat engines are quite bothersome to them. So they function based on sound a lot and hearing all that noise. It's okay, whaleys. Talking to myself for over half an hour, I've had nine minutes of calm breathing. So I think that is a good indication that talking to myself is good. And I can't remember if I said how I copied and pasted some of this conversation I had with an enlightened master and I said, is all this bad stuff happening because I stopped talking to myself? So I was in dialogue with myself. What is myself? So I was talking about some of the extra supplements I'm taking. I'm also, I took 400 milligrams of Sam E and I did take methylfolate. So like I said, I don't know if these, taking this stuff now is the right time. I was supposed to take the neuroplasticity stuff right after the crisis, and I'm assuming that was a crisis, but it's sort of like, was that a crisis? It wasn't that bad. So I'm not sure if it's the quetiapine that made it not as bad, or if it's also taking all these supplements. Because the good thing about if I decided these supplements aren't helping is it would save some money, that's for sure. But they do seem to be helping. The fact that I could have a crisis and then get away a few days later, that's really good. That could be worth it. And so now, if that was the crisis, I have up to three months of struggle. Does this look like struggle? No, but my brain does feel kind of weird, like it's hard to know what to do. I have things to do and I feel like I want to do them. I want to explore around here a little bit and I'm studying a few things. And I brought my coloring because that could be helpful. I did bring a lot of stuff. I did forget my hair dryer. I could have brought hangers and a power bar which I might go to a thrift store for one of these days. And yesterday I had really, really good sushi. I might go there again tonight so I don't have to make dinner. That's the thing, like without having, I think if I had my own environment, own kitchen and stuff, then it'd be easier to remember how to make myself dinner. But right now, I don't even know how. And that's one of the things that happens when somebody goes to the psych ward is it's helpful that meals are provided. 
and it's I'm kind of in a space I just had a crisis where I wish somebody would just feed me but at least I can drive and go get food but it's more expensive that way but the thing is I don't stress about that right now I go with the flow because hopefully at some point within the next year or two I will find an environment that is stable and restful and peaceful that I want to stay in and then so it's a matter of treading water until then so if I have to spend extra money on food because I'm not settled well I don't want to create stress for myself by thinking oh you have to cook even though it's really hard for your brain to figure it out in a new environment so um, yeah just taking it easy that way um, which could lead me to go into debt but that's okay because if I can get through some of this at some point I'll be able to to function and figure out how to earn more money right now if I try to mix that in with this I do work a little bit but if I tried to make working a lot my main focus then it'd be harder to navigate this even though last year I did work for a whole month on night shifts when I was totally psychotic in lower states which is another strategy um, so yeah so this next month see if I have another crisis and if not maybe that was it and then this is the three months of struggle which could be minimized to a couple weeks of struggle or blips of struggle or a month of struggle and it isn't really a struggle it's just the brain doesn't feel like it can keep organized as much and also somebody emailed me about doing private peer support which is interesting because I was gonna create like advocacy business but my brain imploded so I didn't so maybe there's an opportunity to work with someone who's already created something like that because I don't I'm not good at creating the structures of things I don't know what I'm good at it and uh, yeah I think I think that's about it for today it's, it's quite a bit cooler here but it feels hot it says it's like 14 or 16 but the sun feels hot so it's not as cold as I thought it was going to be which is good so I'm gonna read and walk go get food I have an online group tonight and then it'll be nice because there'll be nothing to do for few days so I talked a lot today hopefully it kind of makes sense and one could think well, having a crisis and then escaping to an island and sitting in peace and quiet in nature and not really doing too much but reading and studying and walking in nature and earthing and being in the sun, like that's escaping, that's not functioning, that's not being successful. But the alternative is having a big crisis, calling an ambulance, being dragged to the psych ward seeing nurses, seeing psychiatrists, being drugged, being in a psych ward, interacting with psych patients who are suffering and seeing all that tragic suffering, you know, all the PTSD that comes with that, and how being put in that situation fuels that system. If, if hopefully,
hopefully one day more of us can learn to get to a point where we can get away and we can manage. At least we're not feeding that system. And then it frees it up for people who are getting newly indoctrinated and then the people who have learned to navigate to get out of it or move away from it, you know, still use some of the meds and stuff sometimes um, or as minimal as possible and at least being able to take less when one can then that will eventually one day maybe create a scenario where there is a wonderful sanctuary where people can go and not be put through all that in the first place I feel the main hope is with us learning ourselves and moving away from it as opposed to begging and pleading for the system to create a better system. Because where I am right now, I managed to get to my own good system. Which isn't a system at all, it's nature. But the thing is, through the process, most of us become so fearful of ourselves that we can't imagine going through it ourselves. And I'm not saying people don't. People are very courageous and strong and they get to a point where they can go through a lot of it for sure. one day these major psychological crises or spiritual emergencies or extraordinary experiences or whatever you want to call them they'll be less challenging they'll be less intense they'll be less challenging so you can handle it on your own in different ways you can figure out how to handle it on your own so you don't have to go back to the hospital and and be controlled, like be under the control of somebody else. So it takes a lot of learning to get to a point to have control within oneself even when there's elements of oneself that is out of control. So I think that's hopeful, right? I ho oh, the other thing I was going to say came to me. It could have been, right as I was about to stop talking, it could have been also that before the crisis last week, if that was it, I was practicing not doing anything. I was sitting in nature a lot. I wasn't trying to create plans or schemes or projects or much of anything. And, oh, crack in my back. Watching how the wind changes the ocean is beautiful. And that could have helped to not create more energy that needed to die away. Because the thing is, like, if I'm creating this direction of, I gotta do this and I'm doing this and I'm creating that, when the crisis comes and says, Okay, now everything that you thought of recently or were trying to do is going in the garbage can and there's nothing you can do about it. You're going to forget most of it. You're going to forget everything to the point you can't do much of anything. You can't even function. You can barely feed yourself, let alone start or finish five projects. I wasn't doing any of that. So that could have also lessened the intensity was being in nature before it all fell apart because I wasn't creating structures of human consciousness, of human constructs, of how to fix human constructs. If the energy was there, I didn't really feel it that much because I wasn't moving with it. 
I was not moving. I was literally laying on the earth in the grass or walking in the forest. So that could have created a buffer. So it could be good to sort of go into a sanctuary before and after. And I don't know if most people know that it's cyclical for them in terms of how often it happens and they can watch out for it. But if it's, if it's not cyclical in terms of time, one can figure out the signs. So, so yeah. be it nice at some point to have some kind of kindness and generosity project I don't really want to sit connected to the earth forever I well I could but we shall see Boats are all pointed in different directions looking for the whales. Swim, whales, swim! This little tide pool just taught me a huge lesson. I had to pee, so I came over here and I peed down, and it went into the tide pool. I wasn't really thinking, <laughs> but I learned a lot from this experience. Because I peed in it, and then all of a sudden, all those little water free guys that are running around in there, they all try to get out, and so many of them ran up over there and jumped off the edge into the ocean. It was like the peas in there, and they're like, duh, 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 duh. and they're all trying to get out, and they get out, and they go, and they just jump off. They all know which way to go. So they go from this little comfortable pool, their home, and they're just willing to jump off into the unknown. Because the environment became unsuitable. It became inhospitable. It became uninhabitable. And then the interesting thing was that I used this little tide pool over here to dilute this one. And as soon as I did that, all of them, because it was draining off into the ocean, all the little fleas, they just came back and they went back in the pool. They no longer tried to jump off the edge. They were already, they were already down over here, but they just came walking back like they knew that it was fine now. So they came back. So this reminds me of so-called psychosis and mental health, where the environment is just not habitable anymore. And so people decide to jump into the unknown and end their life. But if the environment was suitable, people would just come back and they wouldn't do that. So that's what I learned from peeing in a tide pool, which I won't do again because it caused a lot of distress. But it just seemed like such a microcosm of what's happening. And they wouldn't even really know, like, I saw the water went yellow, but they were just freaking out. They probably didn't even know what was going on. Probably just nothing they've ever felt before. They just knew something was so wrong and they had to get out of there. Just couldn't be a part of it anymore. So I'm sorry, little one, please. They're fine now. They'll probably evolve somehow with the extra nutrients. Plus the tide will come in soon and help them out. But yeah, just so you know, don't pee in a tide pool. But if you do, you'll see what's happening to humanity. 
all the little guys that are in there just start to run and jump off the edge. This little tide pool just taught me a huge lesson. I had to pee, so I came over here and I peed down and it went into the tide pool. I wasn't really thinking, <laughs> but I learned a lot from this experience because I peed in it and then all of a sudden all those little water free guys that are running around in there, they all to get out and so many of them ran up over there and jumped off the edge into the ocean. It was like the peas in there and they're like Z -Z 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 -Z. and they're all trying to get out and they get out and they go and they just jump off. They all know which way to go. So they go from this little comfortable pool, their home, and they're just willing to jump off into the unknown because the environment became unsuitable. It became inhospitable. It became uninhabitable. And then the interesting thing was that I used this little tide pool over here to dilute this one. And as soon as I did that, All of them, because it was draining off into the ocean, all the little fleas, they just came back and they went back in the pool. They no longer tried to jump off the edge. They were already, they were already down over here, but they just came walking back. Like they knew that it was fine now. So they came back. So this reminds me of so-called psychosis and mental health, where the environment is just not habitable anymore. And so people decide to jump into the unknown and end their life. But if the environment was suitable, people would just come back and they wouldn't do that. So that's what I learned from peeing in a tide pool, which I won't do again because it caused a lot of distress. But it just seemed like such a microcosm of what's happening. And they wouldn't even really know like. I saw the water went yellow, but they were just freaking out. They probably didn't even know what was going on. Probably just nothing they've ever felt before. They just knew something was so wrong and they had to get out of there. Just couldn't be a part of it anymore. So I'm sorry, little one, please. They're fine now. They'll probably evolve somehow with the extra nutrients. Plus the tide will come in soon and help them out. But yeah, just so you know, don't pee in a tide pool. But if you do, you'll see what's happening to humanity. All the little guys that are in there just start to run and jump off the edge.
little snails. They're gonna be covered in water though when the ocean comes in. Oh, he's attached. Look at them. They're waiting for a change of environment so they can come alive. They're in their cocoon. That's what those high energy states are like. It's like coming alive. And then you have to remember when it's not the right environment, when there's the conditioning around and those things that would make us manifest as less ideal, just go into your shell. And don't even talk to people. Wait for it to pass. Wait for the, the tide to come in tide of energy. There are so many of these little snails. They're everywhere. Wow. They look like rocks, but they're everywhere here. This is a good way to be with what is. This rock hopping because if you're not, you could sprain your ankle. So hopping from rock to rock there ain't much thinking. I really think there's something to staying out of society when one has a bipolar diagnosis because when that energy come in, comes in, we're amplifiers and if we're in society, then we amplify society's structures, including the psychiatric system, which is part of society. It's part of reconditioning us to function within society when the energy comes in to to create something new which isn't a function of society because the functions of society are already known they're already old it's a new energy to create something new but so it amplifies but then within that system it creates more of that and amplifies that eating. Yum, 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 yum. I don't know if you can see them. sure why I walked this way. I was walking back, but I came up on these rocks and there were all the seals. I talked about that before, how it seems that this being moves towards life. Not like thinking, oh I gotta get back, but no, oh, what's over there? And it wasn't even a thought. It just, I just walked over here. I don't know why. But now I do know why. 
was to meet life. Now looking over to this tree, can you see it? Dragonfly. <laughs> 